Hello ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to Desktop Minis. We have another Beast Snagger Boy that I am going to paint using the Slap Chop method. But this time I tried something different uh, on his gun that I saw on Instagram the other day. So I was like, I reckon I could do that. And it looked really good. You'll see how it looks at the end. Uh, something to do with the end of his gun. Probably could have been a bit better, a bit bigger, let's say that makes it look a bit better, but I'm really happy with the output, or with the outcome, rather. But anyway, like anything else with the slap chop method, we undercoat the orc in Chaos Black, give it a good spray up, and then we're going to hit it with Celestra Grey, dry brushing. I did make a very slight mistake as I started. Um, I didn't wipe off enough excess paint on my brush, and it went on a little bit too heavy on his shoulder, but didn't cause me any problems, to be fair. So we give it a thorough once over with some Celestra Grey and then we hit it afterwards once it's dried. A little bit light, a little bit light touch with some Chaos White. And we're just looking to touch the peaks of the, the model itself, you know, the high points, the bits of armour, spikes, the edges of the gun, spikes on his wrists, that sort of stuff. That's what gives us a good base to use our slap chop method on. So we go straight in with the orc skin contrast paint or the speed paint from the army painter. I absolutely love the collection I bought from the army painter. It's brilliant. I really, really want to get some more, expand my collection. I do want to start doing some uh, low, mid and high tones. So the next time I buy any paints, I'm going to buy deeper greens and lighter greens and start to accentuate the muscles and the deeper parts of the model. But we hit this with the orc skin. Coverage is really good. Um, this time I didn't make as many small mistakes as I did last time. Uh, last time I painted the Beast Snagger knob, I did touch a couple of parts that I shouldn't have, but this stuff comes off with just a dab of water or a little bit of paint medium and it just rubs right off. So we go ahead and whack all the green with the orc skin. Uh, this time I'm using a bigger brush as opposed to using that small fine detail brush like I did last time. But yeah, I was using uh, the right brush for the right job this time. Um, I didn't time myself on how long it took me to paint this model, but I think it was a little bit quicker. Next job was to get a good cover on his trousers. So I used Snakebite Leather from Citadel, another great contrast paint. Um, I'm still in two minds of whether to expand my Citadel range or to stick with the Army Painter range. I do his trousers and boots in the Snakebite Leather. And this time, instead of using a brown for his leather straps, I went for Grim Black from the Army Painter Speed Paint, uh, being sure not to hit the parts that I want to be metal. Um, my painting is a little bit more methodical, a little bit more tidy. I mean, it was tidy before, but this time, a bit, a bit practice makes perfect, or practice makes improvement let's say um but i'm finding this painting was a little bit easier this time maybe i wasn't quite so apprehensive about making a youtube video <laughs> now i'm a veteran after two videos right <laughs> but yeah the, the, this was a lot more easier for me this process so we're going to hit everything that's black or that i want black it's leather um and i do come back and i highlight that stuff later on so once I got all the leather strapping done, I come in and I wanted to do the handle. I wanted it like a red color. So I used Caribou Crimson on his, I don't know what you would call it, apron or I don't know what it is, whatever he's, you know, got strapped to his belt, that little wavy fabric there. I used Caribou Crimson on that and the handle of the, what would you call it? Sword slash chainsaw, chainsword. Yeah, I like that sound. Let's call it a chain sword. Um, just getting those fine details on the edge of the, the uh, fabric there and making sure I don't make any mistakes and hit anything I shouldn't. Uh, but so far it's come together nicely. Now I've done all the big stuff, um, apart from obviously the, the metal, the black that I use on that and his uh, fur cape or fur wrap, sarong. No, sarong is something that you wear on your legs. But we're making progress. It's looking really, really good. Um, 
I'm really glad I've rediscovered this this hobby over a hiatus of 20 years. I used to do this when I was younger. I started painting this. I remember my first memory of painting Warhammer was I was on a camping trip with a friend of mine and we bought some and we attempted to paint it inside a tent and the inevitable happened and we both spilt some paint and made a hell of a mess and uh, put it away until we got home. And I was in love with it straight away. Um, I remember buying some orcs, some little skeletons. I had some like marine type of guys. I had these tiny little green, I don't know what they were, but they had like shields with yellow suns on them or something like that. Um, I did have a fair decent collection. And then me and my brother got into it uh, many, many years later and we bought a, a big set. Um, we started painting it. It was all good, and then it sat in a cupboard for years. Um, and the box melted, the models were bad. Uh, I just ended up throwing it all away. And um, yeah, I've got back into it recently to try to get my autistic son to find something that he can focus his mind on, focus his brain, his attention on. And and I've rediscovered my own passion for it. So it's it's a weird thing. I've actually painted more than he has in the last few months but um yeah like I've, I've never really lost the I don't know the attractiveness of the Warhammer community or the Warhammer fantasy has never really left me so I'm, I'm really glad that I found this again so now I go in and I start coating up the black uh, and I'm using a base paint I'm using a bad and black but I've watered it down um I don't know why I did to be honest um, I was looking for a specific, I was looking to, to make the, what did we call it, the uh, the sword, the axe, uh, the, I was looking to make the chain sword like rusty colour and for some weird reason I thought that watered down a bad and black was, was the way to go. Um, I kind of got the desired effect that I wanted but not really, but I was kind of happy with it. It kind of looked a bit rusty toward, you know, as it got, got to the end of the video or to the end of painting the figure. Um, but yeah, I just whack everything in, uh, watered down about in black for some crazy reason. I thought it was a good idea at the time. It didn't, it didn't do me any, um, injustice. Let's just, let's just say that, uh, so far so good. I'm really happy with the way the model looked at this point. I've still got so much to learn. I go on Instagram and I see some of these amazing painters and I'm like, oh, really want to learn how to do that. So, you know, when I'm in bed, uh, sort of 10, 11 o'clock at night and I really should be going to sleep, I'm looking at all you incredible YouTubers, uh, painters on Instagram, these these guys and girls that are uh, creating phenomenal models uh, and just pulling as much inspiration as I can from you. So I want to thank everybody this inspiring me, um, not that you know who you are, but you know, if I can do this and I can inspire somebody else to get involved in the hobby or improve their painting, maybe even in my early painting days, even after doing it sort of on and off for 25 years, if I can teach somebody something, then brilliant. I've done, I've done a great, you know, I've, I've, I'm happy that I've done a job to help somebody else out. So here I'm just getting a bit of detail in. I'm using a little bit of um, Abaddon Black on his lips. I just wanted to give him that old, dirty sort of... I've seen orcs with black lips before. Um, they look a hell of a lot better than mine turned out, but, you know, it, it looks really good. Uh, just <laughs> really focusing on the detail, sticking my tiny end of the brush up his nose, trying to get a little bit of a black highlight on his on his nose. And I realised afterwards that this bionic eye that he's wearing is actually um, connected to the skull and there's a there's a flap of skin over the top. Now, in hindsight, there was probably something I could have done with the skin. You know, I like the, the idea of bright red or bright yellow eyes. So I go in and I highlight the bionic eye with yellow and I give it a red dot afterwards. Um... Yeah, I did mess up the eye on the other side, so I'll just clean that up and go back in and just touch that up afterwards. But yeah, I wanted him to have yellow eyes but with red pupils, just to give it that weird orc look. Um, 
yeah, it looks really good. I'm, I'm, I'm again, I'm really happy with the way these things are turning out. What I'm doing, and I'm improving every time I do a model. My the way I paint is better. Uh, the ideas that I have are better. Um, I'm actually formulating some kind of color theme. Um, the first model I did previous to filming these videos was chaotic at best. I had no idea what I wanted to do. I had no idea what I wanted it to look like. Um, it turned out all right, but it could have been a hell of a lot better. Um, and that was with a, a black undercoat. And then I saw the slap chop method with white undercoat. And I'll be honest, I really don't like that. Uh, using contrast paints with white undercoat, it just doesn't work for me. So I'm coming in with some sunburst yellow. I think that's what it's called. Um, and I'm trying to mess with the metal just to try and get it to look rusty. So I diluted some yellow and it kind of got me the effect I was looking for. But I think I needed to add a little bit more brown. So I'm trying to build up a rust a rust look on all the metal stuff. Um, it does take me a while because I'm trying to build it as I go. Sort of design and build sort of thing. It didn't turn out too bad. It could have been better. But, um, I'm, you know, these things are a process. I'm happy to learn, essentially. You know, if people can say that doesn't look like rust, if they want to say it doesn't look like rust, that's great. But more important to me is the process of me learning how to actually do this stuff. And, you know, I'm learning um, in public. I'm, I'm painting these models for you to see how I succeed or fail, the things I do wrong, the things I do right. Um, in hindsight, how I fix stuff, or in hindsight, what I could have done better. So, I hope you enjoy these videos. Um, you know, I'm, I'm having so much pleasure and joy in creating them, and, and more importantly, painting these models. It's absolutely fantastic. I love it. So, I coated this guy in uh, his um, fur cloak with wraith bone, and I put it on quite thick because I wanted quite a dark, sort of, I don't know, filling in the gaps, or whatever you would call it. I wanted the gaps to be filled in quite dark. So I just go in and start highlighting some of the individual feathers or pieces of fur. Uh, I wanted to give it that sort of dirty, yet bright, you know, bare fur coat kind of feel towards the end. So I go in and I dry brush it with some other colours and highlight it with white and just try and make it, give it that sort of, I don't know, wild look. So now that the yellow's dry on, on all the metal, I decide to go in and start messing with some cardboard crimson, just try and darken it up a bit. It darkened it a little bit. Uh, it didn't give me the look I was looking for. Um, I think I finished up with a coat of non-oil over the top of the metal, but it didn't look too bad. So now I'm just dry brushing the fur cloak with some lead belch just to try and give it a bit of a, you know, an old bear kind of look. I do highlight it again afterwards, as I say. But um, the lead belcher give it a really nice sheen, like a, yeah, you know, like a, a silky look. It, um, it was the exact effect I was looking for, and I'm really happy with that. Now I'm just going in, I'm highlighting some of the individual bits of fur with lead belcher. Um, just try and make it stand out a little bit more. I've dry brushed it already and I just want to enhance that glossy look. And now I pick out some more of that fur with some wraith bone. I think it looks really good. Actually, while I'm recording the voiceover, it probably would have looked a little bit better or at least a lot different if I'd have highlighted with some black as well. Give it some black and even some grey. Look, these are the things that I love. Even now I'm reflecting on the paint job that I've already done and I'm giving myself some different ideas. But um, yeah, tell me what you reckon. Yeah, I'm just going around hitting some of those details now with some silver, um, highlighting the rivets and the bolts on certain parts of the model, just to give it that extra little pop that extra bit of effect. So this is what I was uh, talking to you about before. I've gone over the, the gun again. I've, I've deepened the black with some Abaddon black. And I'm just highlighting the front of the gun, feathering it in as best as I can with silver. I can't remember what paint I used, but I'm, I'm going for the, 
the anodized look or you know when metal gets really hot and it starts to discolor into like purples and pinks and things like that so i highlight the end of the gun in silver and i'm not looking to get a chunky finish like a like a a different tone finish like a sharp line i'm i'm feathering it in as best as i can and then while it's still wet i'm adding another layer of purple just to give it that heat sort of effect you know when metal gets hot so I'm trying to give it that that look that I was going for. It turned out really well. It, I could have been a bit more, you know, towards the end of the gun. I could have extended the effect is what I'm trying to say uh, along a bit more of the length of the gun. But I think it worked out quite well. Perhaps if the gun was a different colour, um, the highlight itself might have stood out a little bit more. But I'm really impressed with with the way it turned out. It looks amazing. And now that's done, here is a little close-up of what it looks like. I really like that. I really love it. And now I'm just going around edge highlighting the, the leather straps with Wraith Bone. Just to give it that little pop, that extra finish. A little bit thick there, as you can see. I'll wash it off, clean it up a bit, and uh, go back and try again. But um, it's already the contrast paint is already giving me a decent highlight, and I just wanted to accentuate the edges a little bit on his uh, on his leather pouch and the leather straps just to make it stand out a little bit more I'm overall happy with the outcome of the model it does look really good there are a few things that I could have done better but this is a massive learning process every time I paint a model it's going to be different I'm going to learn something new I'm going to try a new tactic a, a new method a new color theory um, but overall, the process is the thing that I'm enjoying the most. It's, it's, it's a really, really enjoyable therapeutic process. And if you are thinking about painting Warhammer, I really recommend it. You, you do get a lot out of it. Even if you, you know, don't play the games, it, it's just a great, a great way to spend my time. Now I'm just using lead belcher, dry brushing lead belcher on the metal, just to give it that final finish. Um, yeah, the rust didn't, it, I mean, it doesn't really look like rust, but at least I know what not what to do, what not to do, rather. Um, but it doesn't look too bad. It doesn't look too bad. It's I, I guess it's kind of a, a mix between, well, did you want it yellow or did you want it rust? <laughs> but, but, you know, either way, either way, I enjoyed painting this, man. It was really, really good. And then finally, I'm using corn red to go in and highlight the fresh scars around this orc's body this orc's battle worn body i used corn red for the deeper parts and a different red i can't remember the name without looking um just to go around the edges just to give it a little bit of a difference you can't really tell i probably should have just left it with the corn red on the insides of the the wounds but Hey, it's not too bad. Yeah, it's just touching the, the edges with the highlight. I think it's blood red. I'm pretty sure it's blood red, the uh, Citadel colour. But we're not far from finished. Um, just a couple little highlights. Just enhancing that eyeball. On his digital eye. His bionic eye. But yeah, there we go. All done. All finished. Really happy with the way that turned out. Anyway... If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, comment in the comment section if you've got any recommendations for ways to paint things, um, anything any things you've learned in the past. Um, but yeah, if you, if you like what I'm doing, please subscribe and um, I'll catch you in the next video. Have a great night.